walk outside, you know, and you can't see pollution as such. It's not like a fire where it gives off smoke. It only sort of hits home, but when you have kids and they're born with illnesses. It worries me as a parent how factors which I kind of feel are out with my control may be impacting on my children. The evidence about the harm of air pollution is growing year by year. It seems to be something that is toxic to every organ in our body. There's very clear links between air pollution and lung disease, heart disease, dementia, also to things like diabetes, even obesity there seems to be a link. It's even more important to spread this knowledge and understanding to all families in Bradford so that we all feel empowered to be able to improve the health of our families. Air pollution has been a big issue for a number of years. Even recently there was a report saying that approximately 64,000 people prematurely die every year in the UK because of poor air quality. It's one of the biggest public health problems that we have in the UK. 100 years ago in Bradford and the other northern cities, we would see the air pollution. You could see the black smoke coming from the chimneys. So we went to meet Manawar Raja, who has two young boys. One of them has got asthma. <coughs> Hello, little man here. <laughs> what are you eating? Cheese strings. Oh, I need cheese. Oh, you're eating cheese strings. Do you like cheese strings? Yeah. And what is your favourite toy? Uh, a car. Car? And what is your favourite toy, has it? Car. What um, comes out of cars? Cars. Yeah. Like most young boys and young men, I loved cars. And as soon as I qualified as a junior doctor, started buying cars and doing them up, loved them. Being part of Born in Bradford and the research that we're doing on air pollution about seven years ago, we showed this very powerful effect of air pollution and harm to the unborn baby. We measured the levels of air pollution around addresses where pregnant mums were living. And what we found was very, very clear links between the quality of the air and the head circumference of babies and birth weight of babies. Those are very key key factors for living a healthy life. And it was a wake up call for me about how harmful this invisible toxic exposure is to human beings and to children in particular. Hazik was premature by a couple of weeks. He was small, he was four pounds, six ounces. But then when he was two, they diagnosed him with um, asthma. He starts wheezing. So if he gets a little cough or a cold, you'll be able to hear it. Childhood is a really vulnerable period. We've been able to show that this is damaging their lives in the long term. 25% of childhood asthma in this city can be attributed to air pollution and from car air pollution in particular. In terms of the future, obviously it's not something that, you know, that we can predict, but you'd like to think it'll live a normal life. A lot of children's exposure to pollution comes during the commute to school. We are aware of parents leaving cars idle whilst bringing children into school, in particular in the mornings uh, during the rush hour. Sometimes you feel as though you can be powerless about it because everybody keeps driving around still. It's sad, but it also inspires me to help the children that live here to try and make changes that are going to improve their quality of life. I really hope people can start noticing it more. People understand the importance of it, but it's about how we make it as easy as possible. If it's easier to travel actively to work than drive to work, if you're stuck in traffic jams and there's no parking spaces and you're being charged money, which you should be for polluting the air, then people will think of alternatives. And I think as health professionals, we need to do the same. We need to be early adopters. And I sold my car. If you start cycling, you encourage other people to do the same. Start encouraging, normalizing active travel. Everybody who's been involved in the research recognizes that change happens at a small scale level, at a local level. You find that most people in Bourne and Bradford tend to walk or run or cycle into work now. We need to change people's behavior. And the easiest way to do that is through education, but also research and then informing the community through the work of the children, what they can do to improve the air quality in our area. One of the things that we want to do is we want to improve levels of air quality in Bradford and the reason is because you know air quality when you breathe it in all that stuff that comes out of the exhaust pipes and chimney it does some damage to humans. We were using air quality monitoring kit indoor and outdoor. They could visually see what this kit was showing in terms of air quality. That's carbon dioxide. Yeah, so that's carbon yeah. dioxide. So what do you think of the carbon dioxide levels at the moment? Quite high. high. 
They learn how to interpret the data, they walk them around their local schools, their local environments to find pollution hotspots. When we had the air quality monitor in the classroom, it inspired the children to ask me if we could get some plants in our classrooms to try and help the air quality. What do you think causes the highest amount of air pollution? Cars. Cars. What are your hopes for air quality? What do you wish would happen? I wish the government, it takes all gas cars away and then gives people free electric cars. Here are the personal, local issues for us. What do we as a community, what are we going to do about it? The children are the future coming through and it's going to be ultimately them that have to take on the pollution that we leave behind and the children that we teach that are going to have to deal with the issues. So the more informed they are about those decisions, the more they can try and do something about it and try to make Earth a cleaner place. I think the school should start campaigning for the air quality, like in London they started doing this, so why do we start it? Because we're the contributors to it. There's an element of us using our young people to try and change the behaviour of adults within the city as well. We really want to inspire the next generations of researchers. I'm sure from Bourne and Bradford that we're going to have a massive increase in the amount of children and young people who want to look at science, technology, engineering and maths because they can see there's some really exciting stuff that we can do with that. If we can change the way they see things, we can definitely change our future.